Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. Some battles. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they got us. If they did, maybe. maybe. So you will get better as a player during that year. So it was kind of exciting. Like, oh, yes, yeah, somebody wants me. Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. On this week's episode, we are going to talk about what a postgrad year is who it makes sense for, and who it does not make sense for. So about 90% of the people that reach out to me are looking to do a post-grad year. What is that? That is the year between your graduation from high school and college. It's like a fifth year. And for basketball players, that's so important because boys from the age of 16 to 21 hit their growth spurts and become men at different times. You, know, you all know the guys that are 16 and built like men. You also know 21-year-olds that just really haven't started having facial hair, putting on bulk yet. So it really depends on who needs that extra year physically, uh, emotionally, mentally, academically, uh, for college exposure, etc. So first we're going to talk about uh, what it is, where you can do one, and what are the benefits. You can do a post-grad year at a basketball academy or a prep school. Both of those are different, and I have articles and podcasts about the differences between those two. But the post-grad year is going to give you a few benefits, and let's talk about the first one, which is basketball. So during that extra year, you're going to get a couple things. One, once you sign with the prep school, you'll be allowed to play AAU during the spring and summer before your post-grad year. So that is just a, a lot more exposure you can get, especially learn, learn, during live periods, where you can also kind of let college coaches know what you're doing. And they'll see you and go, oh, okay, he's going to be at this prep school. Maybe we'll take a look at him now and take a look at him during the open gym period. So you're going to get more college exposure um, during the live periods, during AAU, also, when you show up at a prep school in the fall, they have open gym periods, which is a period where tons of college coaches come from all over the country to see prep school talent. All right, that's where a lot of evaluations are made, a lot of offers are made during that time too. Scouting services come through these prep schools, and every year the prep school coach has to place, has to place his players. All right, I'm talking brick and mortar now. I can't speak for the basketball academies and what they do for all their players, but at the brick and mortar prep schools, you will get placed, all right, at the right level at the right time. Just because you want to play D1, you might not be a D1 player. Prep school coaches will help you with that. Also, prep school coaches are some of the most connected coaches in America, right? They've been placing kids from high major D1 down to high academic D3 and everything in between. So college coaches love prep school players. So when a prep school coach calls them about one of their guys, they usually get a call back and a good conversation with them. So college exposure is the next thing. Uh, competition is going to be great, right? You're going to have good kids from all over the globe going up against you every day in practice. And then during games, you're going to be having high-level college-like competition as well. So basketball-wise, it's a great precursor to college, getting you ready both in the weight room, during practice, uh, and during games of kind of what it's going to be like at the college level. So those are the advantages of basketball right there. Plus, you're going to get faster, quicker, Another year of skill work under your belt, so you're going to be a more prepared player when you go to college. The second benefit of a post-grad year is academics. Um, if you've got great grades already, a lot of these prep schools offer college credits, right, through actual universities. Some offer AP classes. Some don't offer any at all, but you have a chance uh, to retake one class if you had a bad grade in it. If you have an IEP, which is a designation for a learning disability, you can take up to three classes again, which can help your GPA. Um, I know colleges don't all accept SAT and ACTs anymore, but my opinion is if you take it and get good scores, you absolutely publicize that. So you can do that at these schools. They used to have SAT, ACT prep. I'm sure they still do, um, but that's going to be one thing to help you get in certain colleges. Also, the classroom sizes are much smaller here than your average public or private high school, and most of the teachers live on campus too. So academics here are great, and there are very rigid academic schools and there's very easy ones and there's one in between but postgrads can kind of make up their own curriculum so if you're talking to a coach that's something you want to discuss with them the third benefit is emotional maturity whenever you leave home i don't care what time of life it is uh, you're going to get homesick all right I and mean, i'm talking when you leave home permanently when like you're moving out of the house you're going to get homesick when you get homesick right if you're doing a postgrad year you're getting that out of the way at a prep school to where when you step on a college campus the following year and all your freshman you know, classmates and teammates are missing mom and dad and their girlfriend, you will have already gone through that 
during your post-grad year. I know at my post-grad year at the Air Force Academy's prep school, I think it was January on a road trip where it just hit me where I, I did not want to be there. I hated life. I wanted to be home, talk to my parents, and we had a nice little powwow because we knew this time was coming. We knew this conversation was going to come. After talking to them and my coach, after about 48 hours, I was fine. Never got homesick again. Okay. So you also learn how to um, make new friends away from your old friends and family. You learn how to get to practice on time, classes on time, do your homework when your parents aren't you know, telling you to do it. So you've got to learn how to be a lot more self-sufficient at a prep school. And once again, you'll be much more ready to succeed once you step on a college campus. The last benefit of a post-grad year is you get to be in a school with kids from different cultures. Usually every continent's represented, every time zone in the U.S., kids from different racial backgrounds, religions, socioeconomic backgrounds. So you're going to be with a diverse crew for that post-grad year. So those are kind of the four benefits of it. All right. Now, who should do a post-grad year? I have about, mm, for every 20 kids that reach out to me, I'll take one on as a client that I think is a good fit for a post-grad year player, right? So what does that one guy have that the other 19 don't? Well, a couple things. One, let's look basketball first. If you're good at basketball or you're tall, you're going to be more desired than someone that's smaller or not as good. All right. So looking how good you are basketball wise, what kind of offers you might have at the time uh, will make you more interesting to a prep school coach. Second, your academics. How good are they? The better they are, the more desirable you are. Third, are you from an area not represented at that prep school? If you're the same kid from Connecticut versus a kid from Montana, same kid, clones, the kid from Montana is going to get more interest because they might not have a single kid in their student body from that state where most New, e New England prep schools have a lot of kids already from Connecticut, right? So you're going to be more exotic that way. Uh, third, be an interesting kid, right? Do more than just play basketball, right? Play a trumpet, speak a sec second language, start your own club at school, be an entrepreneur, just be interesting, have a great personality. And then fourth and last is financial, all right? This is a big piece of it. It, it you know... I'm going to be transparent here. If you are not very good at basketball, but you have enough money to pay full tuition at a prep school, I can find multiple options for you, right? Because these prep schools need also to get money from full pay kids to help balance out the full rides and the other financial aid they're giving. So the better you are, the more interesting you are, the more merit money you'll get. Also, if you're interested in good grades, good player, and you qualify for financial aid because your family might not have the money, you'll be more likely to get it too. Okay, so finances are very important to that, right? So that's who prep school coaches look at, okay? Tough kids, interesting kids, good players uh, from different parts of the country, and then finances, all right? One number to think about right here. I've gotten a couple kids in for full rides. Um, they were either seven feet tall or taller from foreign countries, or they had D1 offers, great grades, and they had a single parent who just filled out the financial aid form and qualified for it. Um, and another kid was just another 6'10 kid who had no money and was really talented. So those are the kids right there that got full rides. And I mention that because a lot of families that reach out to me want scholarships to prep schools. And they exist, but these coaches are going to be very picky who they give them out to. All right, so that's prep school. That's who prep schools like to recruit. Now, who is post-grad year probably not a good option for? Well, a couple kids. One, if you've already got D3 offers and you're going to be a D3 player even after a post-grad year and the money's going to be a real stretch for your family, just take the D3 offers you've got, all right? You might get better packages out of this year, but if it's going to be a stretch money-wise um, in this day and age, in this recruiting market, it might not be a bad idea to just go ahead and go D3. Um, it's also not a good idea either if you're D1 or bust and you're not a D1 player. You know, I don't want to work with you because you're going to have delusions of grandeur and be unsatisfied if you don't get D1. And a lot of prep school coaches don't want you either. All right. Not saying you can't play D1, but, you know, these coaches and I have seen a lot of kids throughout the year that, and we kind of know what level you are. And if you're a definite D3 player and you're D1 or bust, probably not the right fit for you. Maybe you should just go somewhere and walk on or at least be upfront with the coach about it and just say, hey, we're going to do this year and we're going to spend the money to walk on in a D1 program. But just know these coaches are not miracle workers, right? You can spend nine months and $60,000 potentially at one of these prep schools. It does not mean you're going to go D1, all right? If you don't want to follow rules, um, if you want to just not do academics, these places aren't the right fit for you either. All right, there are basketball academies where you can live in apartments, don't have to take classes, can just play Xbox when you're not training. 
Um, maybe those are the ones you want to look into. All right. So, and if you have bad grades as well, Fs, um, or been kicked off a team or just have behavioral problems or legal problems, um, or a drug problem might not be the right fit for you. Okay. So that was today's episode. We went over what is a post-grad year? Who does it make sense for? Who does it not make sense for? And um, there's more information on this at my website, prepathletics.com. That's the most hit page on my website is the one on postgrad. So I thought I would want to at least uh, give a nod out there and do a little bit of an intro for those that are just researching this for the first time. A lot of information on my website uh, for those looking at prep schools and postgrad for the first time. Feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is on there. If you want an evaluation or have more questions, um, if you like this, you can subscribe to this podcast on all the major po- podcasting platforms. Um, I got a YouTube channel you can subscribe to and also go to my website, prepathletics.com. And uh, if you fill out uh, your information for the newsletter, you'll get all the latest information, signings, and, um, and announcements from our end. So thank you very much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.